AGA is very pleased to be releasing its first ever clinical guideline regarding the use of probiotics for gastrointestinal conditions. This project is the culmination of two years of very hard work by a large team of people. So we were not able to examine every single gastrointestinal condition. It just was not going to be feasible given our time frame. So the technical review team began with a broad literature scoping search, and we identified eight key areas that seem to have the most evidence regarding probiotics in clinical practice. And those eight areas were broken down into both prevention and treatment. The two prevention topics pertained to probiotic use for adults and children receiving antibiotics for any reason in order to prevent antibiotic-associated diarrhea or C. difficile infection. We also examined the evidence supporting the use of probiotics for low birth weight preterm infants to prevent horrible outcomes, including necrotizing enterocolitis, sepsis, and all-cause mortality. In terms of treatment, the team examined probiotic use um, as part of the treatment of C. difficile infection, as part of the treatment, and specifically in terms of induction and maintenance of remission for adults and children with Crohn's disease, as well as for induction and maintenance of remission for adults and children with ulcerative colitis, we examined probiotic use for adults and children with pouchitis. Many of the existing guidelines supporting the use of probiotics for various conditions are disease specific. So many of these guidelines will examine one disease and potentially many treatments of which probiotics and possibly prebiotics and symbiotics are just some of the many treatments available. Our team flipped this model around and we examined probiotics in general and we examined them in the context of multiple gastrointestinal diseases. Even more importantly, our team realized that nowadays not all probiotics are equal. And even within various probiotic species, different strains of the same species of probiotics can have very different effects both in the laboratory and in human studies. Therefore, we tried to dig down as deeply as possible and examine not only probiotics in general, but probiotics down to the specific strain level. We wanted to create a resource for clinicians to say not only, yes, probiotics might or might not help my patient in this situation, but if so, which specific probiotic might that clinician choose?